Hey, how are you, sir? You can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, I was starting to panic you. They didn't have my login information, but so let me just tell Kelly that I got it. Hold on a second. Right. He's my representative. How are you, my friend? I'm hanging in there. I can't complain. How are you? All right. I got a late checkout. I had called him up. I was like, hey, I know what you said 2 p.m. was the latest that you could do, but I've got a Zoom call. Uh, okay. So uh, I hope you don't feel like I'm rushing you. I do have to get out of here soon, but I'm going to give you some, a little bit of, I will play you feel like it's a good amount of time. Sure. Yeah, well, hey, I, uh, yeah, yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Hey, I'm Corey King. I'm a, by trade, I'm a private investigator. Really? Yeah. And then uh, for fun, I do a podcast with my friends uh, talking sports, football, wrestling, um, things of that nature. So I was pretty stoked to be able to, to talk to you. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. It's only like the fifth one of these I've done. So I appreciate it. I know they're a little bit costly. Yeah. But thank you, bro. It's worth it, though, to talk to some of your childhood heroes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I would do that if I had the chance. Yeah. You ever heard about talking to somebody solo? Usually it's a couple or like three or four friends around. So the, the uh, private investigation world must be going well. Yeah, I think it's recession proof. It really is. Uh, we're about 50 miles west of uh, Nashville, Tennessee, which I'm sure you know Nashville. And, sure, uh, yeah. Lived there for a little while. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's booming. I do a lot of cheating spouse, things of that nature. So, yeah, it stays hot. I, seem to I imagine with the, uh, with the internet and Facebook and all that stuff, it makes uh, it makes cheating so much easier. Yeah. So there's the business is going to be brisk, right? Well, there is, there is. It's a dangerous profession, but um, it has been good to me. I, I'm not going to lie. It's uh, It's been interesting. And what else do you do besides, uh, besides the cheating spouses? Uh, a lot of custody stuff. Mom and dad have already broken up, but somebody's not got their life together and they're worried about the kids and okay uh, yeah drinking and driving drugs things of that nature they need it proved that's cool it's certainly not your usual nine to five job no it's not i've done some bail bonding some fugitive recovery things of that nature so it's definitely an interesting profession but like i said it seems to be in you know recession proof uh, yeah that's good i i tell you what this uh cameo stuff has been good to me yeah. Because unlike uh, your business, like re wrestling, in some ways, it is, you know, it, I had always made my living going places sure. to be, with, you know, around people. And so I was looking ahead, like 46 shows lined up from the middle of March through, uh, man, it was like a really, maybe more than 46 shows, maybe in 46 cities, but I, was, I had a complete lineup and all of a sudden, like that, I had nothing for six months. So these cameos came along in May 20th. Wow. For me to make a little bit of money and enjoy it too. Yeah. Uh, and not have to leave home. That's pretty special. Like, I've heard of people who hate doing the cameos. And right. they do it you know, because of the money. I'm like, I, lo I, lo I love doing it. You know, every morning I wake up, I see if I've got a few to do. You know, like I said, I've only done a few Zooms. Sure. But I appreciate it. No. You were going to pay for my um, groceries this week. They, hey, that's okay. I hope you get them, some good ones. Uh, hey, uh, uh, you probably want to ask me some questions, so yeah. go ahead. Uh, first time I saw you live was April 1989 at the Dallas Sportatorium. Really? Cactus Jack Manson. Yes, I was Cactus Jack Manson. That wasn't, I had nothing to do with that, but I did play into it. I will admit yeah. that once I had the name and Robert Fuller, I just saw Robert's brother Ronald, Ron yesterday. I said, I don't know, Rob. Jeez, he's a mass murderer. And he was like, Jacko? It was not too many full time jobs out there, son. Man, man gets himself a good gimmick. He could ride that a long way. And I thought, you know what? If I'm going to be Cactus Jack Manson, I'll be the best Cactus Jack Manson I can be. Yeah, first time I saw your ass with it, I was like, yeah, you fought Brickhouse Brown to a 15 minute draw. Um, and uh, Devastation Inc. was coming out about that time with Scandal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I go I go uh, so, a long way back with you. Ah, uh, that is going all the way back. You know, yeah. some people like all the way back to mankind. I was like, ah, there's some, yeah. some stuff I did before that. Sure. Are you from the Dallas area? I'm originally from Nashville. When I was one, we moved to Dallas. Uh, we followed the construction craze. My, all of my family was in construction. And so, okay. yeah, from uh, 81 till 92, 
we were in the Dallas area, and uh, it seems like every Friday night we were at the Sportatorium. Yeah, I love it there. Pretty crazy about the Von Erics. I well, you do like the Von Erics? Yeah. Yeah, man, they were they were it. They were big all the way around. And to this day, I know Kevin says he goes to Israel. He's treated like royalty because I think that was one of the first big shows on on TV in Israel, like for, you know, wrestling related. So he's still treated like royalty. That's one place I've not wrestled. Right. I've been really? Every different countries, every state in this country. So I feel lucky that I've gotten to do a lot of stuff. Although I am enjoying staying home these days. Yeah. Hey, I don't blame you. You put in your time, man. Soak it up. Um, I had, I did have a couple of questions for you. Is uh, sure. Of the characters that you played, which one was your favorite? You're, you know what? You're sporting I, the tie dye today. What? You're sporting the tie dye today. I am sporting the tie dye. The reason I did it is a dude love shirt. Yeah. Um, the reason I'm wearing that is because uh, yesterday I did my first uh, live event, my one man show, in eight months. Um, uh, Tampa had told me it was going to be tough to refund the money because it was originally a uh, uh, it was originally going to be April first, which was kind of kicking off WrestleMania week, and so that show. So Sold out pretty quickly, and they had tickets from you know, state, uh, several states around the country, several countries around the world. It was going to be tough to give everybody a refund. I said, "What if we took the one sold-out show and we did two shows? You know, no extra money for me, but two shows, so we could separate. You know, and I could feel like I was doing my part to social distance, wear the masks during the meet and greet. And so we did it. And now, a new biography. A he's doing a biography on me." which is a big deal to me. I had one done 20 years ago. So my feeling is it's one thing to do one on someone when he's on top of the wrestling world. It's another to do one 20 years after the fact. Right. So I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, since they're filming it, I couldn't have uh, you know a shirt that has a logo from the theme park or anything like that. It had to be something that WWE is going to be fine with. So I wore my new love shirt last night. Yeah, man, that's cool. And I've got, hold on a second, just turn your head just momentarily for about five seconds. Okay. All right, I'll tell you, or close your eyes. Okay. All right, hold on. You've got a surprise coming up for you. Okay. Oh, I did it. Dude, I love the hippest cat in the land, Daddy. Coming Man, I remember it. Yes, sir. Yeah. That is amazing. It's pretty good, right? Yeah, that is pretty good. So I like to throw that in on my cameo videos. Uh, I don't know, cool. sing a song, something like that. So I'm um, going back to your question. This is the fondest I've been of the dude in a long time because I'm finding I can now uh, have some fun with that character. Right. I was having trouble getting into the characters. I was doing a, a reality show, WWE is a great show called Quest. I think that's going to be with Amy also, where they dispatch superstars to look for different. Uh, kinds of lost memorabilia sure. so that WWE can put it into their eventual museum. And uh, and they wanted me in the introduction to do like the characters. And I'm like, I haven't done the characters in a long time. And so it took me a while on camera. But once I was able to go, dude, once I got that part, dude, blah, and then it was like riding a bike. Sure, you jump right back. At the beginning, on. choppy. So I really enjoyed being do love these past few months, but I had to go back in time. As much pride as I took in being the original Cactus Jack, it was the latter day mankind that connected with the most people, especially people like Steve Austin, obviously, who's had more fans, The Rock had more fans. But I don't think, and people, you know, connected with Austin as the underdog fighting against his employer. Right. Uh, the Rock was more like a superhero that everyone knew they could never be. But with uh, the Larry of Mankind, he seems to connect to people who uh, felt like they had been misunderstood or didn't fit in. And I didn't even realize that while I was doing it. I didn't realize it until years after the fact. But I think for those reasons, I'm going with Latter Day Mankind. Final so you're answer. talking about the white shirt, the tie, the rock yeah. and sock connection. Yeah. Not people forget that the, the the character started out being really dark. Not dark. I mean, I remember the promo. You were sitting there talking to yourself and pulling out air. Yeah, yeah. I remember that was the really, promo. I'm I, like, man, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, and I remember. I, had a good time. I definitely had a good time doing it. And, uh, you know, uh, the Undertaker was a big part of my uh, 
the, the reason that character was successful. So I'm actually going to be on the Survivor Series next week um, with The Undertaker. You know, as part of that celebration, I don't know what role I'm playing, but I'll be part of it. Cool. Um, next question I got is, is who is the one person that you would like to wrestle that you never did? Yeah, I used to have a list of three people, and that was Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Bruiser Brody. And then I did wrestle Ric Flair a few right. times at good matches. Uh, Bruiser Brody uh, has d died many years ago. And uh, I wish I'd stuck around on TNA long enough to have had, um, an, you know, a match with Hogan. Yeah. So it would have been... It would have been very methodical, but Hogan's got his detractors for sure. sure. But I told people, if you stand in the same room with him and you tell me it's not a big deal, you're lying to yourself, you know? I don't remember uh, many hardcore matches with him, though. I would have thought you and Brody would have been, like, top echelon. Oh, yeah, yeah, it would have. But I think we could have had a decent match with with Hogan. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how good, but I, I think we could have told a good story, built it up sure. in promos. And uh, so that's the one guy. Now I look at guys like Bray Wyatt, and I wish I could wrestle them, uh, sure. modern day guys. Uh, realistically, if I were to ever come back, the best guy I could probably work with is someone like Triple H, sure. who could work around my weaknesses. Right. Uh, a few years ago, when I was, oh, the rain just started coming down here in Tampa, Florida. That's yeah, I got, Florida. well, it changes. As, if they say if you don't like Florida, Florida, stick around, it'll change in 10 minutes. So, uh, Hey, uh, any other questions? Yeah. Um, what was your favorite match? Favorite match for a long time, it was Beach Blast against Sting in 1992. Then it was uh, Mind Games against Shawn Michaels in 1996. Uh, but from my like a personal standpoint, the match I had with Randy Orton at Backlash in 2004 probably was my best match, and it did the most for him. Yep. And it did a lot for me, too. Like, I really got to go out on a high note. I really enjoyed that match. I had lost, like, 60 pounds. I guess if I need to do that, yeah, I get, I'd lost 100 pounds, like, four years ago. Now I'd put it all back on. Right. It's like it's, it's like I'm fighting and fighting against Mother Nature. And she's like, no, this is who I want you to be. You look like kind of a big dude yourself, right? Yeah, I'm a big guy. Um, I'm not real tall. I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", five, five, but I'm a big guy. So, you know, uh, it, it, Tough to go against the, the, the cards you were dealt um, genetically, but I'm going to give it another try. I've just been really bad with eating snacks every single night. Yeah. My binge night is, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a commonplace thing. So, yeah, I have, to, I have to remember what it was like to get, you know, get back and eat healthy and start exercising again. So, uh, yeah, I got a lot of work that's ahead of me. Tell me about this guitar you got in the corner. Yeah, that's my. That's my Epiphone, and I got a Johnson back here, and I got a couple more over there. My family plays musical instruments, my dad, my brothers, but I, I piddle with them, but they're the ones that are the aficionados. So I have them oh, here cool. in case anybody wants to, to play with them. Or if a match breaks out, I got it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's they right. got that so foreign object to you. Nuts on them. <laughs> the, what did you say? You quote Jeff Jarrett there? Yeah, the slap nuts. Put, put the guitar on them. That I saw him. Yeah, wrestle, that was pretty. I saw him wrestle at the Dallas Sportatorium. I guess that's when his dad kind of got into that area. And uh, yeah, his dad bought the, yeah bought the company for a few years. Yeah, from Kevin. ran it, changed to the U.S. Duck Bay. And he was really good. I, 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 yeah, my yeah, time I, in world class. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I saw Matt Morgan before he was doink. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw. Him, I, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, Matt was good. Yeah, all all of those guys who came up in Dallas, I remember all of them. I remember, I remember the uh, the uh, the Undertaker when he was the Punisher. That's right, the Punisher Dice Morgan, Morgan, right? Or just the Punisher? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think he came in as Red River Jack. Right. I think he wrestled Brody a couple times. Right. But I did I'm have not sure. I did well, have one big I question did. for you. Okay. All right, June twenty eighth. 1998, King of the Ring, Civic Center in Pittsburgh, the Hell in the Cell match. Yeah. How bad did it hurt when you when you took the dial? Yeah, and that was a tough one. I mean, to this day, this is the way I looked before I uh, had that match with Undertaker, this kind of smile. Yeah. And after, it was like this. Right. So, 
I still have two more teams that need to be pulled from that match, you know, that are routing out. And that's like a six month process, about 20 grand to put a smile together. It was something that happened 22 years ago. Really hurt my kidney for a while, you know, rang my bell, so I had a pretty bad concussion. And I was, uh, I was moving pretty slowly for a while, for about six or seven weeks. I was really, really feeling that one. So I had no idea that, you know, I, I, it's funny because if that same thing happened today, it probably would have trended for about two or three days. Oh, yeah. And then just been pretty much forgotten. Like, uh, I saw a bump, um, I don't know, maybe Kevin Owens took it off the top of the uh, cage, and it was almost as cool, and it was like a big deal for a day, and then nobody ever talked about it again. So uh, I've seen a bunch of cool things, and, you know, that match just kind of struck a note with people. And, sure. You know, 20 years after the fact, it's still a big deal. My friends always made fun of me because I was, in that time, I was a sophomore, or excuse me, a junior in high school, and we always got together and watched pay-per-views. And they always made fun of me because I would stand up when something big happened and I would say, that was real. And when that <laughs> happened, you had this smile on your face when you came to. And it was, yeah. you, know, you, were, you were messed up and everything. And I said, that's real. And they were like, we'll give you that one. <laughs> and I told them, I said, I haven't seen a, a, a jump that big probably since Snooka, Mur you know, Don Morocco off of the top. And yeah. it was just, that was just so much more elevated and more devastating. Yeah, I, I was the same way. I was that fan who liked to like go, all right, that had to hurt. Yeah. And so I just, and a style that had to hurt, you know, that would make people say that, that had to hurt. And that seemed like a good idea when I was 19. And then when I got into my late 20s and 30s, I got maybe I should have gone a different direction. But it, uh, it served me pretty well. Listen, I hate to, I think it's, no, uh, fine, we, get, we get a pretty good, we had a pretty good conversation, right? You answered every question I wrote down, brother. Excellent. Keep up the good work. I might need to contact you down the line. Never never know, man. Corey King, you can find me anywhere. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. And, uh, seriously, uh, I, I really appreciate you as you get older. Giving us an avenue. All right. Thank you very much. And you have a nice day, all right? You too, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.